You know how fast you were going? What? How fast you were going? I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast, so if you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot, turn this off before you get butt hurt and mad, start to cry, have to run to your safe space. All opinions are those of the host and his guest, and do not reflect the opinions of any government agency. Welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. Your host, as always, the Ice Man. We got uh, just got a few news stories to talk about midweek as I started doing. Uh, one little small announcement. Uh, it was supposed to happen tonight. Uh, wasn't able to do it, but I'm bringing a co-host on to the show for the uh, news every week. Uh, the co-host will be uh, Doc Holliday. I had talked to him. He agreed. He ended up having got called to do something with work this evening and wasn't able to make it even though he was uh, supposed to be here. But hopefully uh, next Wednesday he will be here and uh, we'll be doing the news part of it together. So that should make it a whole lot more interesting. Uh, I will apologize to everyone now. If I sound nasally, that's because I am. It's yellow season. I suffer from allergies during yellow season, which sucks balls. I can't stand it. But it is what it is on that, and uh, nothing I can do about it. So take some decongestants and Claritin and Afrin and all that other good crap to dry myself up. So if I do sound stuffy, that's what it is. All right. Uh, let me just say it before we get started. I appreciate everybody that listens. Like I said, this month is uh, the one-year anniversary of Motor Cop Chronicle, and I do appreciate everyone that does listen and uh, just supports me. And uh, I can't tell y'all how much I do appreciate it. Uh, that I do it because I enjoy it, and I hope y'all do too. So hopefully I'll be getting some uh, merchandise shortly since uh get the wife she makes it all might have some uh epoxy cups that she does we can sell and uh some t-shirts and stuff is that nature and i will hopefully soon be putting that up so if anybody does wish to purchase any merchandise from motor cop chronicle it'll be for sale and it'll help uh support the podcast a little bit you know, cause I do pay for everything out of pocket. I mean, it's not super expensive, but it does uh, come out of my own pocket. Anyway, let's get started. The first story tonight we're going to talk about is out of New Orleans. I'm going to play some. Uh, I say I'm going to play some audio. I'm hoping to anyway. On the uh, the shooting, here it is. Uh, make sure. We don't have any uh, commercials ahead of it. It's uh, two shootings overnight that left one person dead and two other injured. This happened on April 4th in New Orleans, Louisiana, of course. I try to talk about mostly the uh, stuff that happens here in the state. So uh, let's start listening to it. In locating a person of interest involved in an overnight shooting that injured two people. Police identified the woman in this picture as 28-year-old Shayla Bradley. Bradley is not wanted on criminal charges, but the department hopes she can answer some questions as she and the man in this picture were seen fleeing the scene together. Police say the man is the suspected shooter. The NOPD says they received calls just before 2 a.m. of the shooting in the 700 block of Canal Street. Police report a man shot two other individuals after getting into an argument, then fled the scene. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. 
Anyway, that's uh, the little news part of it. If you're watching the video on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch that I'm broadcasting on also, these are the two subjects that NOPD is looking for. Uh, me personally, uh, I went to high school on the West Bank, uh, Jefferson Parish, and used to, in my younger days, used to go out there all the time and to Bourbon Street and all stuff like that. Me now, as a grown man, I have lost nothing down there. You ain't gonna, you're not going to catch me in New Orleans whatsoever. Uh, they said they were investigating two separate shootings. Did leave one person dead and two injured. First one happened at 11. Saturday near the intersection of Banks and uh, Carlton Avenue. They found a man suffering from gunshot wounds. Transported to the hospital where he later died. The second was reported by NOPD just after 2 a.m. on a Sunday. That happened at the intersection of Bourbon Street and Canal Street. Been there plenty of times. Plenty of times. One of the victim, victims was a woman who was involved in an altercation when the suspect pulled out a gun and shot both of the victims. The female and the suspect were last seen fleeing the scene on foot. They're searching for the woman and the man pictured. If you're, like I said, if you're watching the video and they were captured, on, there's, there, there's cameras all over the freaking place on these businesses and everything else. Uh, they never, they didn't release the, oh, it's the time of this story. They didn't release the name of the victim that was killed. Like I said, if anybody has any information about these people, I don't, like I said, I don't think the woman is wanted. I think they just want her for questioning. I don't think she did shoot. And I think this guy right here did it. Uh, they want you to call 504-822-1111. Like I said, it's, it's fucking crazy. It's, it's an upside down world. Talking to my wife about that the other day. It's just, it's just a totally upside down fucking world right now. I mean, I had a talk with a guy in a traffic stop just yesterday. Uh, older gentleman. We were talking. He was like sixty, and we we got in a conversation about how how the world's just fucking so upside down now. It's uh, it just makes no sense on the crap that's going on anymore. It, <laughs> I mean, why? Why do people do? They're doing everything they do now. I mean, it's just. I wish somebody could explain it to me. Because, I mean, pe people don't fight no more. They don't. <laughs> they they just shoot each other and over nothing. Uh, we did a funeral today where. Someone was uh, the person that we were escorting. Uh, I think it was around 19 years old, shot and dead over an argument over a woman. I mean, that's just, I'm sorry, it's just ass and that. All right. Well, get rid of that picture right there. This next one I don't have any graphics for, so you're just going to have to listen to me. That's what you're here for anyway, right? There is audio on this one also. And we'll uh, play it, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. As soon as the little commercial's over with, we will do that. Because nobody wants to hear the commercial, I'm sure. Hope everybody's having a good week. It is hump day. One day I will talk the wife into letting me buy my own camel because everybody knows I want my own fucking camel. I want my own. I want to call him Humpy McCumperson, my own hump day camel. I have enough property to do it. And everybody's like, why do you want a fucking camel? It's, like, it's just like owning a big cow just with a hump. It's a tall cow. All right, here, here's the audio. Cases have been tossed out because of that ongoing corruption investigation within the Baton Rouge Police Department. More on what he uncovered today, Chris. 
Yeah, Liz, Greg, the arrest of the two officers within BRPD's Narcotics Division have left prosecutors looking into just how many people with drug and weapons charges were wrongly charged or convicted. And the evidence that we have so far tells us there's likely a lot more to surface. In recent weeks, District Attorney Hiller Moore has been dropping charges against any defendant whose pending cases are linked to two officers within the BRPD Narcotics Division who were arrested earlier this year. The current number is now at 640 cases. Officer Jeremiah Ardwan was arrested for purchasing stolen electronics, followed by Officer Jason Acree, who was accused of stealing drugs that were seized as evidence and was later booked with possession with intent to distribute. This is just part of the experience of being in the criminal justice system. There are some bad apples, you know, and, and those people in, in the power, in the positions of power that officers have, when you're a bad apple, you affect the liberty of individuals every single day. Criminal defense attorney Jared Ambo says there's a big distinction between taking the stand and saying something that's not true versus officers doing illegal and sneaky things on the job. The reason that those are different is that, you know, taking the stand and saying something that's not true can be dealt with in the courtroom and on a case-by-case -case basis. But when you start to have a lack of faith in someone's behavior on the street, that causes serious problems, right? Because now, now defendants are coming into court facing evidence that's not actually true. In a memo Officer Ardwan wrote, he alleged more widespread corruption within the narcotics division, claiming some of his fellow officers routinely stopped and searched black people without any probable cause, planted drugs on people, and coerced prostitutes into setting up drug dealers. When something like this happens and it's, and it's generally harmful, right, to the whole system, it's even more so to those people that already are suffering bias under the system. Since those arrests, four high-ranking narcotics officers have been reassigned to uniform patrol, and the division has undergone significant review of their personnel. But Ambo says more needs to be done in order to maintain the public's trust. Well, I think you prosecute the two officers that were un undertaking illegal activity. I think you definitely do that. I think you, you drop the cases that need to be dropped, right? You dismiss the cases that are based on their behavior. And then lastly, you do exactly what they've done. You remake the department. He says letting situations like this occur without any consequence would ultimately end any faith the public has in the police department. We want police officers to take the stand and tell the truth. And if they're willing to take the stand and lie, if they're willing to undertake illegal activity on the street to frame people, then that is fundamentally not who we are. And that's fundamentally not how our criminal justice system works. And when you do that, your liberty can be taken just as easy as mine. Both officers that were arrested are currently on administrative leave pending the outcome of their cases. Guys, back to you. All right, Chris, many thanks. All right. So as you hear, that was out of Baton BRPD, Baton Rouge City Police Department. Uh, by a little backstory, they did have two officers, uh, both in narcotics. As that story said, I think one was arrested. And uh, I'm not, well, I'm not sure if he was arrested. He should have been for uh, I think buying stolen stuff, stolen TVs or something. The other one was caught taking. Taking drugs out of evidence, uh, no, let's say, I don't know, I'm just, it's a hypothetical. If they had a pound of marijuana, you know, they would, wouldn't, he wouldn't turn, he wouldn't turn in the whole entire pound of marijuana. I don't know, I don't remember reading anything on saying that he was selling it. Uh, the one news story I read before, he was supposedly giving it to some of his buddies or something like that, which is, it's fucked up anyway. I mean, regardless, you don't do shit like that. I said they had to, district attorney dropped 640 drug cases. That's just crazy. And I know why they had to do it. And because you had these two cops that are out there fucking breaking the law, being criminals themselves. And hey, you ain't going to hear me defend them any which way. If they do in the dirt. They got to do the time. If you want to do the crime, you do the time. And uh, it, it's cops. It is bad cops that give the good cops bad reputations and name. But for every one bad cop, you can have a thousand good cops. But people don't look at it like that. Uh I mean, we can't even say that. Uh, 
like I said, this this is my opinion. So, but my opinion is, as you see, I've seen a lot through the years. I'm not saying I, I've seen it with my own two eyes, but read stories and stuff about it that a lot of uh, narcotics officers end up uh, in trouble over you know doing illegal stuff. And uh, my opinion is the reason they do that is because, I mean, you you live in that life of a criminal. Uh, with the drugs and all that stuff like that, and I, it's not an excuse at all. But I mean, I think some of them just get caught up in it. I mean, I don't know. If I know I'm old. They used to have a TV show on called The Shield, uh, with a guy named Vic Mackey, and they were basically corrupt cops and stuff like that. I mean, it's if you're out there doing the shit, you're eventually going to get caught. Karma is going to catch up with you. Your luck's going to run out. You're going to get busted, and like I said, I'm sure out of them 640 cases that the district attorney is have to, having to drop, how many of those people were actually really guilty of it? Or how many people were not actually guilty about, of it? So, I mean, they got to drop them. But how many actual real drug dealers are just going to get let go right back out on the street to go reoffend again? I mean, I would hope none of them would, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, there is going to have, the majority of them will probably reoffend. They will reoffend. And, and it, like I said, it's just a sad fucking situation. One one or two bad cops can make a whole fucking department. People look at a whole fucking department and think everybody's like that, and it's not true. But anyway, if they did it, Hey, they need to go to jail, take the punishment, make sure they can never, you know, ever wear a badge again. So, I mean, that's my opinion. If that pisses off anybody in law enforcement or whatever, sorry. That's my opinion. If you don't think so, I mean, if you think different, I mean, that's why, you know, we live in a semi-free country as it is, uh, the way it is right now. But, it, I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> Dude was buying stolen shit, and the other guy was might not have been selling drugs, but possibly he was taking evidence or stuff that should have been put in evidence and giving it to his buddies to what to use to sell for him. I don't know. If that was the case. Hey, there you go. I mean, don't do the shit, and you won't get in trouble. So there's no. Uh, hard feelings for me they're gonna get, get what they deserve just like uh if a cop is accused of something that he didn't do and it's found out that he didn't do it great but uh come on the news won't report on that of course because they don't like to report on the stuff where the cops actually are found innocent you'll never hear back about that one again ever if they're found uh, innocent, but like I, in this case, I, me personally, I don't, I don't think they'll be found innocent at all. All right, this next one, uh, I'm going to give out a little warning ahead of time. Uh, any civilians and stuff, or any cops, if you got a, a weak stomach, uh, there is some graphic photos on it. Not. Nothing I took. This was on the news. So I'm not showing no evidence or nothing like that. But there is some uh, graphic pictures on this one. So just forewarning ahead of time. Okay. This lovely lady right here I just pulled up if you're watching the video. Uh, her name. She's a 27-year-old Dustin mother this is um in Dustin, louisiana i'm not sure really where that's at i'd have to look it up at on the map probably a very little bitty town anyway she's a 27 year old mother she's been arrested on charges of second degree cruelty to a juvenile following an incident that happened to her son on april 1st according to police her name is samantha Ducey. She allowed her eight-year-old little boy to light a bonfire unattended. 
Now, my thing is, did she allow him to do it, or was he a kid and just did it? Because she said, yeah, go ahead and do it, and just stayed inside, you know. she yeah, It's all on her. Now, I remember when I was a little kid, me and my friends got together. Uh, we would, if we had a bunch of wood pile or something, we'd pour way too much gasoline on it and light that shit on fire. I poured like five gallons of gas on a, a fucking big pile of wood and limbs and shit my dad had stacked in the field and made a little trail. And when I lit it and it sucked oxygen, that it lifted the shit up. I mean, it it, it made it, it, it shook the ground. Well, my mom came running out and shit and wanted to know what the hell we were doing. She had no clue. But if this woman, this the, according to the story, it says that she's fucking allowing it. So, like I said, if that's the case, hey, she's going to get what she deserves also, hopefully. Anyway, the, the police said the child was injured, but his mother failed to seek medical, medical attention. Now, when I pull these pictures up, even if she didn't know they set this fire or were going to do it, when I show you the pictures of this kid's injuries and she did not bring this poor kid to the doctor, it's like, what the fuck? Like I said, I'm going to pull the pictures up in a minute. You're going to be like, geez, if you go look at them. If you're listening on the audio version of the podcast, I go to Facebook or go to YouTube to my Motor Cop Chronicles podcast channels on either one. And the videos will be on there. You can fast forward to this point and go look at the pictures if you want to. Anyway, it says, after four days of intense pain, a relative intervened and brought the child to a medical facility where the injuries were diagnosed as second and third degree burns to the face, hands, and legs, police said. Second degree cruelty to juveniles defined as the intentional or criminally negligent mistreatment or neglect by anyone over the age of 17 to any child under the age of 17, which causes seriously bodily injury or neurological impairment of that child. Police say the crime is a felony and punishable by up to 40 years of hard labor. Additionally, police say they are working with the Division of Child and Family Services on this case, and charges are being forwarded to the 15th Judicial District Attorney. Do say is in the Lafayette Parish Correctional Center with no bond. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and pull these pictures up of this poor child. I mean, this picture right here. I mean, he shows the looks like his uh, left back calf, and the skin is actually peeling off of his leg and just hanging off his leg. I don't know how he can get both his legs burned, but he must have some other shorts on because it's a perfect line, but. This kid's skin is this skin this kid's skin is actually hanging off his leg. Like I said, go to Facebook or YouTube and look at the video and you'll see it. The second picture of it, I believe this maybe his leg or his arm. It's hard to tell. I think it's his leg also. And it's a closer picture and it shows the skin just big chunk of skin just peel down his leg and Another big, deep, deep burn. You see where the pus and all that nastiness is starting to get in there. I mean, and she didn't bring this kid to the doctor. This fucking woman right here did not bring her child to the doctor. And I could just imagine. I, I mean, I just burned my finger on a fucking stove and the shit hurts for a few days or something. It's bad enough. And this kid's skin is peeled off. This last picture, look at his hand right here. I mean, I don't understand how it got sh- these sh- perfectly straight lines on it i don't understand how that happened uh he must have he must have something like a long sleeve shirt or or something something that stopped it but his hands you can see it i mean i mean it's got big pop marks where where it just burned and you know so deep and pus and stuff like that and this, this bitch didn't have enough to Bring her poor little child to the fucking doctor. Like I said, come go look at the video. Come look at the pictures, people. It's bad. And for not bringing your kid to the doctor. If she has any other children, they need to take all of her fucking kids away. This bitch right in here don't ever need to have any more children. Why would you not bring your fucking child to the hospital? Not the doctor. To the emergency room. With burns like this. 
that is completely, completely insane and outrageous that you wouldn't bring your poor child who's eight years old. This kid had to be just just laying there crying in, in, in freaking pain. I think I've probably been crying because it's that fucking bad. This kid's good chance he might have scars for the rest of his life because of this shit. Like I said, I can understand if, if she didn't know that they were going to do the fire or whatever. But after you've seen what happened and you see how bad your child is burned and to not bring him to the hospital, bring him to the emergency room. Fuck, I would have been calling it a, a boo-boo bus to come pick this child up and bring him somewhere. So to me personally, like I said, this is mostly all my opinion in my rant. This cunt right here don't even have, don't need any of her kids ever again. That you're gonna just let your kid for days? I think it said four days. Come on, god damn, lady, what a piece of shit! And I'm assuming, I am assuming that there is no daddy around, or he'd have got charged too, because if a dad saw this shit and he didn't do nothing either fuck him too but fuck this bitch thank god they had one person in the family that saw it and it's like oh no this kid needs to go to the hospital thank god one person in this family has some common sense because this bitch right here has a zero common sense none okay well, I could just it, that if you go look at the pictures you'll see why I'm so pissed off that why this why this bitch just <laughs> I don't know, I, just don't, I, I, I can't see. I can't I can't see how she didn't fucking just call the authority. Uh, the ambulance immediately. Immediately. My heart sinks for the kids. I'm glad the bitch ain't got no bond. I hope they fucking feeding her roach sandwiches or something in jail. She's probably eating better than she's fucking feeding her kid. Anyway, let me take those now. I'm fucking horrible. Horrible. This last one here, there was a shit ton of stories this week. I could I could probably go for well over an hour, but I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do it to you. I'm not gonna do it to y'all, so don't freak out. I just said that. I'm not gonna go for over an hour. I'm just saying there were so many stories this uh this week that happened in, in this fucking state. It it's ridiculous. Like I said, I could go for a long time. Anyway, this this next one, uh, the headline on the uh, news article from WBRZ Channel 2 out of Baton Rouge, it said, video appears to show Hammond police hitting a handcuffed man. Now, I'm going to pull the video up and, and show it that that the people uh, that someone posted, somebody, I think, if I remember the story correctly, that she, uh, the, a sister, his sister or cousin or something. Anyway, I, they do have audio on this one also from the news. I, I don't put the, the whole videos up. I'm just going to the audio. I think the guy's dad also speaks on here. And uh, I don't make fun of him. The dad don't seem too intelligent, but that's not part of the story. But they do interview him. Here we go. Nope. Still doing ads. Got more. Here we more commercials and ads online now than they have on regular TV. Just want the video, people. This incident did happen in January, and of course, you know, stuff like this does take a little bit longer to come through. Here we go. Department investigation. Allegations excessive force has been used at the end of a police chase. News 2's best casualty is in Hammond tonight. Two little puppies that I got. This is Moo Moo. David Jenkins Sr. unknowingly witnessed his. First of all, why is the fucking man talking about his two puppies when his son just got his ass beat by the cops? Just want to throw that out there. So um, Moo Moo and stuff on the video here looked very content. They were laying in the chair sleeping. I just want to say Moo Moo looked like a happy dog accident and subsequent arrest as he was in town running errands. I just seen all the cop cars and the truck that he hit 
and stuff like that. And then when I got home, my stepdaughter had a video of it and she showed me the video. The video is the one seen here, showing several Hammond police officers surrounding David Jenkins Jr. on the ground. It's from late February when police tried to pull Jenkins over for traffic violations and not having a license plate. He didn't stop and try to outrun police, eventually crashing into another car and trying to run away. But he didn't get far. Police calling what happens next a, quote, brief struggle. But his father has more concerns. Yeah, I mean, he was down in handcuffs already, and they was punching him and kicking him and kneeing him, and then they sicked the dog on him. You can see the punches and kicks here, and the dog enters the video toward the end. They shouldn't have even brought the dog out. He wasn't running. Jenkins Sr. tells me his son had to go to the hospital that night while still in custody to be treated for bite wounds. No matter what he did wrong, that still don't give them no right to beat on him. Yeah, hey, from the video, it doesn't show him trying to beat on them. A city spokesperson says the altercation is under investigation and didn't want to comment until after it's wrapped up. The suspect's father believes someone should be disciplined. They're there to serve and protect, and they're not serving and protecting by beating somebody. The city council member asking the department to make its investigation public when it's over. In Hammond, Best Casserly, WBRZ News 2. Two people were hurt in the crash during the chase. Another video of how officers interacted with the suspect last year is the focus of a federal investigation. Days before. All right. First of all, the, like I said, if you go to either YouTube or Facebook, you can watch the video and we'll pull it up and we will watch it. Uh, the audio is not on this one right here I took it off but you can hear if you go on YouTube you can find the video that's where I found it you can you can hear them yelling and screaming at him to quit resisting give us your hands give us your hand and the video is extremely shaky it was taken from a cell phone like I said I guess from this guy's stepdaughter you can see one of the guys uh, is hitting the guy a few times I don't know if that was to try to get him cuffed because he was resisting. Uh, you can see the dog come out. I don't know why she kept moving the uh, camera around. Uh, I'll play even the second time if anybody wants to go watch it. And in the video, you can't. I can't see if the dog actually bites anyone, and or anything like that. But I mean, if the guy's physically resisting arrest and not handcuffed and fighting, I mean. The guy, one of them, he's doing knee strikes. It looks like he's doing knee strikes to the guy's legs, uh, which is in defensive tactics training to get its pain compliance, trying to get him. I, don't, I can't see where he's, he's punching the guy. Uh, like I said, they brought the dog out again. But right after they bring the dog out, she turns the camera and films the fucking police cars and goes back. So you can't see if the dog's biting anyone. I'm assuming that they don't have any, uh, like I said, I'm assuming that they don't have body cameras, or if they do, the footage hadn't been released or anything yet like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to reserve my judgment on this one because, like I said, from the video, uh, arresting someone that's being violent or arresting somebody that is resisting very forcefully and you have to use a higher amount of force against that person to get compliance it's not pretty when you have to put hands on people and physically fight them to get them arrested it's not pretty i don't care what you see on tv or anything like that but someone who's resisting and when you're arresting somebody and have to use force you have to use violence back against them let's just say what it is with his force, it's not pretty. Did they violate any policies on it? I don't know. I don't know what Hammond Police Department policy is. I do know it looked like the knee strikes the guy was doing is what we're trained to do. Uh, if Jeff was here, he might know the name of it. I, I, but we've trained to do those knee strikes into the the leg, the side, you know, the side of the leg to get compliant. 
Uh, the guy was shown throwing some punches. I don't know if he was hitting the guy in the head or if they even made contact. Uh, like I said, it's hard to see how much he was re- resisting. So I'll keep my comments either or on that one. That's why they have people that will investigate it and come to a conclusion. And I know some people out there are like, oh, yeah, but you cop the old video, you investigate, you always find each other. No, we don't. Okay. If you listen closely, it says in the news story that the guy was running from him in a vehicle. He caused some crashes. Two people were, other people were injured in the crash and stuff like that. So this dude wasn't just laying there saying, okay, bring me to jail. I mean, good chance that he was, he was fighting to get away. Hell, he could have been high on drugs. Don't know. My opinion. I said maybe. I don't know. It's a possibility he was high on drugs or whatever. And I've arrested people very high on drugs. And the amount of force you have, if they're physically resisting you, the amount of force you have to use is high because they don't feel pain like a normal person does. So, man, like I said, I'm going to reserve my opinion either way on that one. Uh, like I said, the guy throwing the knees, it looks like he was fine. Uh, not sure the guy throwing. I mean, police are allowed to use a closed fist on people. I don't understand why people think that we're just supposed to say, oh, please, sir, stop resisting. We don't want to hurt you. Oh, please, sir, stop. When somebody's physically fucking fighting you at the time, you had to physically fucking fight them back. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just the way it is. You, you know what, Jethro, whatever this guy's fucking name was, if you didn't want to get arrested, don't fucking run. Don't hurt other people in the process of it. Now, I don't hear nobody boo-hooing and crying that this dirtbag fucking hurt two other people in the process of trying to get away from the cops. Do you? No, I haven't heard it. So, like I said, I'll reserve my opinion. We'll see if they did anything wrong or not. That other incident they're talking about, uh, just before I started doing the new stuff, I think, uh, I don't know if he's a chief or he's a high-ranking guy out there or something. They got him on video uh, hitting uh, I don't know, a handcuffed subject or something like that inside the booking room. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't remember. But that would, happened a while back before I started doing it in the new stuff. But that's what they're referencing. Excuse me. But that's what they're referencing in that that article. Uh Got a message said just because your man crush is live doesn't mean you can go get out of doing dishes that you ate that non-Asian meal on. Well, I haven't had my meal yet there, Mr. Roy. I haven't had it. And I do lots of dishes. Trust me, ask the wife. I do most of the dishes. But... Like I said, there was a shit ton of uh, stories this week. I, they had one pop up right before we started. I almost read about it. Uh, it's very short. The, some guy in Baton Rouge was in the drive through or something at McDonald's. Some guy walked up to him, stuck a gun up and said, give me your wallet and your money. And the guy put it in gear and drove through the flower bushes or something and left. I mean, that's bad when you can't even get a fucking Big Mac, which are nasty with a thousand dollar dressing or a fucking quarter pounder or get chicken nuggets without getting fucking robbed right this guy said he's been living in baton rouge all his life and he's thinking about trying to get out of there now uh there is a a big story that did just happen in baton rouge you know me, we'll we'll save it until next week. Uh, I can't go off completely how I want to. If I was retired, oh, it would be a whole different story on this one story. But uh, we'll get into it. Involve the BRPD and uh, a college athlete. They just released some body cam footage and stuff like that. Uh, me and Jeff will talk about that a little bit. Uh, like I said, 
come back and see it. Doc Holiday will be on. And uh, oh, tune in uh, this Sunday. I do have a, a out of state cop will be joining in, phoning in on the telephone. I talked to him earlier. I talked to him yesterday, and we will be. Yeah, he's a. I just he's not from around here, so he's a sergeant and a SWAT team commander. So hopefully, I'm pretty sure he'll have some pretty damn good, interesting stories. So come back Sunday. Uh, we'll be live again, and uh, and then hopefully next Wednesday, Doc will be here, and we'll be going back and forth on some stuff. And uh, it should be interesting. So, if you have any, uh, if you would like to be on the show, as always, like I always say, hit me up, Motorcop Chronicles at gmail.com. I'm um, on Twitter at Motor C, Motorcop Chronicles Podcast on uh, Facebook. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we're on YouTube. Like and subscribe, hit the notification button. Uh, if you're on Apple, give me a five star review write, and write me a review. Or if you hate me, give me one star and write a review. Tell me why you hate me so much. Uh, I prefer to at least know why someone don't like me. What's up, Jeremy? You're a little bit late. About to be uh, signing off here. <laughs> but uh, like I said, if you'd like to be a guest, uh, hit me up. Uh, you can do it by telephone, no matter where you're at. Uh, if you're out of the country, uh, Try to do it by Skype or Zoom or something like that. I'll figure it out. I'm not the smartest uh, motherfucker around, but I will figure it out. Uh, if you have a story you'd like told on here and don't want to appear, uh, send it in an email or a message or something. I will gladly uh, read it with my finely articulated country southern accent here. I, it's no big deal, buddy. It's no big deal. Uh, and, uh, like I said, you don't have to be a cop, uh, veterans, military people, uh, communications, jailers. Hell, I take firemen, EMT. Uh, you got some stories in law enforcement you want to tell? Come on and tell me. Uh, so, as I always say, uh, smile because the Ice Man could always be behind you. I'm cranking up on the throttle This is how legends are made